Last week, I made a video that discussed what the future would look like after the coronavirus pandemic went away. The video discussed many things. The summary of that video was, as a result of this coronavirus epidemic, we will see the end of an American-led world which will result in chaos and unrest around the world. That will drive the need for a full authoritarian world government that rules through a new digital age where our money, identification, medical records and overall health, our shopping habits and social interactions and everything else are all tracked and monitored. And all of the details that surrounded it was how I perceived the future from my vantage point. Now, the information in that video could be perceived as a little intense. I read a lot of comments that said that the information scared them, or many asked what they should do because they were not going to take the vaccine and RFID chip. Many comments like that. And I do understand how this future could provoke feelings of fear and worry, and that is never my intention. This world aggressively works in a manner to deceive and distract us, to keep us following their path until we head off the cliff. My desire is that there is a sound perspective so that proper decisions can be made and proper preparations can be done. It's not about fear, but preparation. And I'm not talking about physical preparation. I didn't make that video so people can go find bunkers and stock up on guns and ammo. Absolutely not. It's more about a mental preparation, getting our mental and spiritual minds right. I truly do understand how difficult the times that we are in are. I have been expecting this new world order for a long time now. And for even me, as these events start unfolding, I'm filled with massive thoughts. They are not often about myself, because I can stand on my convictions. But thinking about everyone else, not wanting my children to go through this, and hoping, if I'm not around, they are strong enough to reject the direction of this world. Worrying about family and friends, hoping many of them wake up from their slumber and choose what is important. Worrying about many of you, and praying that you all have the strength to choose our Father more than this world. And so these times require a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, a lot of rebuking the devil, a lot of strength. There needs to be a certain mindset within all of us believers of the way. And what I want to do is do my part in providing some perspective for you to think on, so that you can be better prepared to deal with the times and trials that are ahead. Let's begin. So for me, what I want to be able to tell you is don't worry, because before all these things happen, we all will be raptured and we will escape all these trials. This is what I want to tell you. Just believe in our Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, and you will escape all of this coming future. But the challenge for me is making sure I'm not teaching false doctrine or applying the scriptures incorrectly. The doctrine surrounding the rapture is quite controversial. I get it. Some people believe in it, others do not. Please do not waste time in the comments debating this. I've made a video discussing this topic for those that still might not understand what the rapture of the church is. Now, do I believe in the rapture? Yes, I do. I believe that what is coming is all about Yah's wrath. And his true children are not appointed to his wrath. I believe his word when Yahshua prophesied to the church of Philadelphia in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 that, because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I believe this, and so this is a hope that I have in my heart, that as a follower of Yahshua, that myself and all other believers who are found to be in the Church of Philadelphia will not be here for the evil times that are ahead. I'm being very transparent with you. And though many people come against me for believing this, it doesn't change my desire for this. So I do hope that the doctrine of the rapture is sound. But here's the thing. What if I'm wrong? What if the rapture is mid-tribulation or post-tribulation? And I have brought you with a false hope that did not build enough strength in you to deal with the evils of the world during the worst period of time in history. No man knows the day nor hour. And also, why should I assume that the world financial collapse automatically coincides with the rapture? I shouldn't. What I'm trying to say is, I'm not telling you not to worry because you will be raptured. I'm not saying you will not come across struggle or tribulation. As a believer in Messiah, your expectation should be that you will come across struggle and tribulation. 
The whole direction of this world is about leading the world into worldwide worship and control of the devil, where the world places its trust and hope in Satan and rejects the Most High. They reject his plan of redemption through Yahshua. Anybody that accepts the Most High's plan of salvation should expect tribulation. You are moving in complete opposition to the direction of the world. You are swimming against the currents, and you should understand how hard that can be if you're trying to move forward. In John chapter 15, verse 18 through 20, Yahshua says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. A problem that we face is that the Christianity of today does not necessarily promote proper expectations for disciples. This is a problem because when a believer finally makes the right choice in their belief, they do not fully understand the fight they are engaging in and therefore does not build their strength enough to engage properly with this world. What I'm trying to tell you is that whether you believe in the rapture or not is your choice. I don't believe that believing in the rapture doctrine or not is a salvation issue. But I would not solely be preparing for the rapture. What that can do is reduce your mental mindset that you may need to fight against a tribulation that is coming. What I recommend is that your focus is on being a true follower of our Messiah. Focus on entering through the narrow gate that few find and not going through the broad gate that many are trying to enter in through. That's found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. I would focus on strengthening your relationship with him, following his ways and commands. The only way you will know his ways and commands is if you feed off his word as your daily bread. I truly believe his word and promise that because we have kept his command to persevere, he also will keep us from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Regardless of how that actually looks and transpires, I am completely assured that his word is true, and those who have developed a strong relationship and dependence on him, those who have kept his command to persevere, will be protected. So if you are asking what you should do to avoid this future, your only answer is surrendering to the will of the Most High. Focus on relationship and not religion. Focus on being obedient to him. Focus on forsaking the ways of this world. Focus on eliminating idols. Focus on being the righteousness of Elohim. Focus on belief in his son whom he sent. Understand Yahshua and follow him. He speaks on many things and tells us what he desires from us. But we must take the time to get to know him and commit to him. This is your only answer. And the good news is that if you do this, you truly have nothing to fear or worry about. Strive to be like the early church that were considered outlaws for believing in Yahshua and forsaking the Roman ways. They were severely persecuted, but their faith made them understand that it was bigger than them. And if it wasn't for them dealing with the persecution and persevering, we might not know the gospel today. Because Rome aggressively tried to squash the belief. But the harder Rome got, the stronger the church became. And the rest is history. You must be willing to lose everything and bear your cross. The devil has successfully got many of us attached to a world that is about material possessions and status. Desiring a comfortable life where we can do what we want, when we want, how we want. And he has put this life in our hands so much that we will do whatever we can to preserve it. Reject that mentality. You must be willing to lose everything and follow our Savior. So what I'm saying to you is that you must commit to him. Now, here's the challenge. For many that have been working on their relationship with him for a long period of time, this task may not be as difficult for you. You have been working on your relationship with him and have been learning to hear his voice and trust in him for a long time. Like for me, there was a long process of hearing his voice and then trusting in him. A lot of correction and rebuke from him. It was a process, but over time, there was a strong relationship that was built where I trust him with my life and the life of my family and put us completely in his hands. And I appreciate the time that he gave me to grow with him. So for me to apply all that advice I gave moments ago is something that is easier for me 
than for others that are just realizing what they must do. Because maybe you are right now realizing how severe these times are and that you must take this seriously. Maybe you've been in a personal struggle with sin and idolatry for years and you know that you must do something before your time runs out. If that is you, you must work harder than you may be accustomed to. Think of it as if you were in a race. If everyone has started the race before you and you just now decided that you're going to enter in, if you run at their pace, you will never catch up. You have to run harder. Or it can also be compared to being in a relationship with a significant other. In a normal relationship today, you can take time to understand your significant other. You can learn to trust and depend on them, building a relationship on a solid foundation. You put the time in to know that you can trust them with your heart and they will do right with it. And for many that have been working on their faith in God for years, we have been very fortunate that we were able to build a relationship in this same way. But for you that may be waking up right now, you're going to have to go from meeting your significant other to immediately marrying them. That trust and dependency you must have must come immediately because of great faith. And unfortunately, you may not have a great deal of time in growing this faith. This shouldn't discourage you though, because I am here to tell you, and many others will testify to this as well, that there is no one better that you can depend on and trust in, and this is the best decision that you could ever make. What I am telling you is that it will just require strong faith, belief, and desire immediately. And you must be willing to activate it right now and live through it. Now in the comments section of the last video, there are a lot of the same questions and concerns. So I would like to address some of the concerns many people have expressed. What do I do because I am not going to take the mark of the beast? So listen, as a believer in the end times, you must make tough decisions. There are many that see the direction that these current events are leading us, and they know that they will not be taking the vaccine or RFID chip no matter what. They know that if they see the system being set up that you're not going to be able to buy or sell without being a part of it, they know that they will not accept whatever comes with it. And it's easy to say that now, but unfortunately, when the time comes, it may not be that easy. So now that we've talked about the faith that is required, and the focus on your relationship with him that must be established, let's talk more about the mindset. Not accepting the mark of the beast means that you will not be entering into their new world order. Like Revelation chapter 13 says, no man may buy or sell except those who have the mark of the beast. So as we start seeing this system come together and we see the mechanisms for this prophecy to come into reality, those that choose not to accept the mark of the beast will be outcasts of this world. You must understand that. We will not be able to use the system for anything. And for many of us, myself included, because we can't live off the land, it may be a matter of survival. So if I am in this situation, there must be a mindset that I hold. And that mindset is that this system is not my source. I will trust and rest on my Father in heaven. And whatever his will for my life is, I surrender to it. And this is the mindset you must start to hold now. Build yourself in that understanding now. Because when you become weak and hungry, fear and desperation and a lack of faith will try to sneak its way in and give you a false feeling that make you choose the mark for the peace and safety of this world. Now, what also must happen is that believers all around the world will be forced underground. Not literally underground. Well, maybe for some. But is moving under the system. What we must do today is start preparing and building these underground communities in the present. Communities completely off the grid. We will have to barter with one another and work together. This must be something that is set up all around the world. Those that do not take the mark of the beast will be labeled a danger to society and will be sent to camps and the Antichrist will seek to kill and destroy all that he gets his hands on. The book of Revelation assures us that there will be many that did not take the mark and those that died for the faith. Rapture or no rapture, for those of us who persevere, that do not take his mark, and are persecuted for our stance in our faith, his word assures us greatness, that if we keep his promise in our minds, it will make going through the difficult times ahead easier to understand and deal with. Revelation chapter 20 verses 4 through 6 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, 
and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yahshua and for the word of Elohim, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of Elohim and of Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Remember these scriptures, because there is an ultimate promise to those of us who stand strong in the tribulation. Those who do not bear the mark of the beast and who stayed faithful to Messiah. These tribulation saints, though they are persecuted, many beheaded, will reign with Yahshua for his 1,000 year millennial kingdom and will be his priest. I really want everyone to really sit and think about how awesome our Elohim really is. Think about that we know that we are in the end times and think that how possible it is that these scriptures were written about you that you are actually living out these end time prophecies and you are actually the physical representation of these biblical prophecies that were made 2000 years ago. It's completely wonderful and awesome to know our place in the world. This promise is the first resurrection. This is a glorious promise and it should be something that is at the mind of all believers during the end times that know the future and persecution that awaits them. In these days ahead, your mindset must be one of strength and perseverance, one of service to the Most High. What if you're forced or deceived into taking the mark of the beast? Basically, I guess the question is, what if you're held down against your will and forced to receive the mark of the beast? Now, I obviously don't know the future, but nothing in scripture says that the mark of the beast is something that is forced. The mark of the beast is like a pledge that you trust Satan to protect you and keep you. You're bearing his mark. You're trusting Satan more than you do the Most High. You are saying that you understand that the only way to survive is by accepting Satan's terms, and you will do it in return for his form of peace and safety. It says you do not trust the Most High, and it's not his will that you live for, but your own. The mark of the beast is a form of worship, like the warning from the angel in Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 says. If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. When accepting the mark of the beast, you are receiving his mark. Now, you can be deceived into it. Yes, obviously you can. I believe that the majority of the world will be. I mean, it's not like it's going to be labeled as the mark of the beast. It's not like it's going to say, take this pledge of loyalty to Lucifer. No, it's just like how we are today. People are deceived into following the devil because they lack reliance on the Most High. They seek out and trust the world more than they do our Creator. They have not worked in building a level of dependency on our Father and His Word. So when problems come, they look to the world for the answers more than they look to our Father in Heaven. And who is the God of this world? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel of Messiah, who is the image of Elohim, should shine unto them. That's why it is important to learn to put your trust and dependency on him now. So when things are rough, you are already built up strong enough to depend on him rather than trusting the world. You are going to have to make the choice. Do I trust the Most High and his word, or do I trust the world system and government leaders? This will be a decision you will have to make for yourself. You may be pressed to take it, and they may make it mandatory, but resisting it at all costs is what is required. I'm not really scared for myself, but for my children. What should I do? I can't really answer this question and tell you what happens for our young children. As far as I can see, there's not a lot of answers in the prophecies about what happens to our children. Again, going back to how I started this video, this is one reason why I hope for the rapture, because I do have young children. But rapture or no rapture, the only thing that we can control is ourselves, 
and how we take care of our children. The same thing that applies to us not being a part of society will apply to our children as well. What we must do is continue to raise our children up in the knowledge of our Father. Do not hide the truth from them, but raise them up to understand the Word of God and to make sure that they choose our Father. If this issue concerns you, pray about it and ask Father for the peace and strength to get through it. Keep your family close with you. Don't focus so much of yourself as a believer and forget about them. They need to know about our Father just as much as you do. Teach them and help them establish their own relationship with our Father. What do I do about my family and friends that do not believe? Pray for them. Continuously pray for them. Yah does answer prayers. I've seen this with my own eyes. There are many people that I've prayed for that eventually have had change of hearts. Just because they are not in sound mind today does not mean that they can't be tomorrow. You must pray for them. And when you are with them, be consistent. You can either drive them closer or push them away from him. Now, the unfortunate truth is that everyone will not come around. Some people have bogged their life down in sin and have completely decided to turn their back away from belief in Yahshua. They have an antichrist spirit that needs to be cast down. But if they are holding on to the spirit, they are blocking the power of God to work in them. You can't save everyone, but that doesn't mean that you can't try. For those that seem far off, just pray for them continuously. Just know that as the end times come, and if these people take the mark of the beast, there is nothing else you can do for them. There will be a time when you must separate completely from them. The answer to this concern is, pray for them and be a light in the darkness for them. I think these were some of the main questions that I saw in the comments. I have also made a video that may help you if you fear the end times. Please watch it. This video may help give you more courage and strength. I know these times that are approaching can bring a lot of different emotions and most of them are negative. But change your approach to this because for believers, this is not a negative thing. If you believe in Yahshua the Messiah, then you are the righteousness of Elohim. You are on the winning side of this. If you have fear, then know that this is Satan talking to you and you must rebuke him in the name of Yahshua. Remember the words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy and apply it to yourself. For Elohim has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our master, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel, according to the power of Elohim. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Yahshua said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, he has given us his peace. But if you do not allow yourself to rest in it, fear and doubt will overcome you. This change in the world is all about him. You obviously recognize that, which is why you are refusing to take the mark of the beast. Knowing that this is all about him, it doesn't make any sense to take your eyes off of him, to not trust him. He is our refuge. He will get us through whatever comes our way. And whatever comes our way, if it seems severe, he will give us the peace to deal with it. It all depends on you and how much you have surrendered to him. If you are still holding back from him, I understand why you may be scared. Stop holding back from him. Let the words of the Apostle Peter rest with you. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify Yahweh Elohim in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Have a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Messiah may be ashamed. For it is better, if it is the will of Elohim, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. That's 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14-17. through 17. Yes, we are in the end times. Yes, our faith will be tested, and strength will be required very much so. You will be fine if you keep your faith in Him. Keep your faith and trust in the Most High. Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear Him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Your faith and trust will be rewarded. 
Keep your eyes always fixed upon him. Rebuke the devil when fear comes upon you. Continue to be a steward of his kingdom today. Spread the good news. Fight the good fight. Make our Father's will your priority. Yes, the world hates us, and it will get worse. But stand firm on the winning side and continue to live victoriously. You are the righteousness of God. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all for the outpouring of love and support. Thank you to those who have donated to this ministry. You are sincerely a blessing and truly bless this ministry. I'm humbled by your support and I'm very thankful for you. You know who you are. I sincerely thank you. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. Make our creator the most high the priority right now. Be ready and be blessed. I love you all.